uh, you personally had a very, you know, uh, seamless system. Uh, you know, this is what you did with your process, like interviewed me, asked me exactly what I wanted. Um, and I mean, out of 15 properties, I would say three or four of them, possibly even five were exactly like 100% what I wanted. Like it was like seamless. It was very impressive. Thank you. And then there are two or three complete misses, but out of 15, Happens. that's not bad. Out of 15, Happens. that's not bad at all. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sonia from Selling Budapest, and we are here today with Rosie. And um, I just wanted to sit down and chat with him about uh, his journey buying properties in Budapest. And I'm just going to start with the first question that I always ask everybody: Why Budapest? Well, um, because this is limited. <laughs> okay. Um, so I generally like traveling. Um, I've been to 32 or 33 countries now, and I came to Budapest last June. Um, it was only supposed to be for three days, um, and then I didn't have a return flight, and I think after about 10 days, um, I asked a friend that I'd met um, if he knew a realtor, and that's where you came in. Uh -huh. um, and the reason was... Um, just from the, the traveling I've done, um, you know, you get to appreciate different cultures and and um, your comfort zones, and just being here it felt really comfortable, um, incredibly affordable compared to a lot of cities, um, specifically way more affordable than the U.S. Uh, then there's a historical context of it, and the people are really nice and cool, and the food's pretty delicious, uh, and since I'm traveling back and forth, I had a base in Istanbul, Turkey, but that wasn't uh, my favorite spot, so I was looking for uh, another base, and I explored uh, different cities. I thought about Dubai, I thought about Oman, and, you know, and um, and. So they didn't make a lot of sense and with the golden visa program coming up um, it kind of triggered a, a new um, way for me to to live in europe without limitations right so i understand that um you have done golden visa in uh, turkey yeah. in istanbul yeah i got the resident the permanent residency through an investment and then I do currently have one in Oman as well, and that's if you register a company. Um, but the thing in Budapest that also made sense is the investment opportunity. So just a lot of things made a lot of sense. Um, and uh, I just think it's, it's going to be a golden time for um, investments in general and for, you know, depending on which country you're coming to or going from, um, to have just a really safe and affordable place that you can relax. And so what is that you're trying to uh, achieve? A similar investment that uh, you have done in Turkey? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, in Turkey it was a 500,000 euro investment and you get your permanent residency. Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much the same Which here. is pretty much the same here, yeah. except for 500,000 euros in Budapest, you get a lot more bang for your buck, a lot more. Oh, you um, think that the market, like it is the the quality of the properties are better? Yeah, by far. Than in in uh, Istanbul? Yeah, um, the standard of living is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. um, quality of living is a lot higher, and the quality of the investment is a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and from my understanding of speaking with several people. Um, some people say the economy is doing really great. Some people say they're not really happy about it. Um, if you're the Hungarians. In Hungary, yeah. But um, from my brief analysis, I think it's, uh, well, I mean, I think it's a safer investment than Turkey. Hmm, interesting. Um, and especially because it's the beginning of it, um, I think has a lot more growth. Whereas in Turkey, it's on the tail end of it. 
And I mean, you're in you're in a Schengen zone with Turkey. You're just in Turkey. I mean, you know. Right. I mean, it was nice while it lasted, but I think you get a lot more pop here. So you pretty much you are planning your exit from Turkey, correct? And moving into the next country. Yes, which is going to be Hungary. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for for Americans, um, Budapest is a great place because just everyone speaks English. I mean, for the most part, I haven't really is encountered. Is that your experience so far? Yeah. Uh, going into the bank. Going into the bank, everyone spoke English. I mean, you know, some better than others, but uh, I don't really feel like. I mean, I haven't used my Google Translator one time here, whereas in Turkey, I, I basically have to use it for all the time everything. Mm -hmm. um, and just the people are really, really nice. I mean, it, it far exceeded my expectations. Like this. I thought it was going to be some Eastern European, like everyone's going to be like cold, but for the most part, everyone's been nice. That's good. Yeah. I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> so, your first property. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it. You would like to run it as an Airbnb or at least uh, right. take advantage yeah. of having the license as far as if you would like to, like have the flexibility. Right? right. Yeah. So the, you know, I mean, especially like while I'm traveling, I mean, why have an empty apartment sitting around somewhere? Why not just make some money off of it? Sure. And it's fairly easy so far, but you know? So far, it's been pretty seamless, yeah. I mean, we don't have a lot of experience in it because it hasn't technically started yet. But, you know, thanks for your help, right? <laughs> um, we're getting um, some guidelines, at least, like some, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a checklist of, of what the process is like. So what I'm explaining to other people. Because you are also thinking to bring others. Right? Yes. Yeah. So we always talk about shiny and the bright yeah. side of the yeah. things. Is there any any challenge um, in the process that so far you're seeing? I think that would be very yeah. useful for others. I mean, there's been, uh, as you know, the you know, some some people want their money in cash, and then going back and forth with my with my bank in the U.S. I mean, they've been very helpful. But we don't, yeah, I mean, I would say like the cash parts are, are a bit weird. I think we have to improve on moving on to the wire transfer, like getting used to the wire transfer yeah. and forget about that everything, cash society. Yeah, um, because I mean, I know in the U.S., I don't even hold cash. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing's cash. I don't have any cash in my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, throughout the EU... I'd say it's been a mix. Some some countries really love cash, yeah. and and others don't. But I mean, one challenging thing here is uh, because of the the decimals. You know, it's not like you're walking around with two hundred thousand Hungarian forint. Right, and what is that? It's like really like five hundred dollars. Yeah, and then you just have a thick wad of cash with you. Right. Most of the part we are pretty good when it yeah. comes to accepting cards. Yeah. But it's true that in society, we still cash is cash is king. king. Yeah. yeah. So that that part is has been annoying, um, and nothing else really. I mean, uh, you personally had a very you know uh, seamless system. Uh, you know, this is what you did with your process. Like interviewed me, asked me exactly what I wanted, um, and I mean, out of fifteen properties, I would say. Three or four of them, possibly even five, were exactly like one hundred percent what I wanted. Like it was like seamless. It was very impressive. Thank you. And then there are two or three complete misses, but out of fifteen, Happens. that's not bad. Out of fifteen, Happens. that's not bad at all. <laughs> um, and yeah, the process has been pretty pretty smooth so far. Um, of course, then we're going to have to wait and see how the bureaucratic part of it works. Oh, the government I mean, the, it's going to be two parts to it, right? Like one, because you are about to sign a contract. Yeah. So that's going to be number one. Yeah. And going through the, the entire process of purchasing the first property. Yeah. And then it's going to be the number two that uh, right after we already know that uh, from 1st of July, we will be able to, um, with the, of course, with the immigration um with immigration assistant, but you will be able to submit um, your application yeah. 
a golden visa and then see like how how that process goes yeah exactly because that is like everybody knows it's brand new so you are going to be one of the very first, first ones. applicants Woo-hoo. that right <laughs> there at first of july will yeah should be interesting all the application here here i am yeah so um and there aren't any language um restrictions so i don't have to learn hungarian uh, unless i want to become a citizen um yeah. so uh, that part I really like. And then the other part that you told me is once you hold on to your investment for five years, you get a permanent golden visa. This one is something that we need to still clarify. There are some questions that we don't know the answer yet. Right. But we are hoping, learning from the previous program that we had during the 2010s, uh-huh. we're hoping that uh, this time is going to be similar okay. to it. Yeah. So, you know, but... Um, People ask those that uh, have not visited Hungary yet. They asking about the crime, and they asking about what it's like uh, walking around the city. Is there, you know, daytime, nighttime, or anything that you have ever noticed? No, not a single thing. I mean, there's uh, your casual old drunk guy that's asking you for money. I mean, that's happened, but I mean, compare that to any U.S. city. Compare that to Turkey or, I mean, well, most places that I've gone to, like, I mean, it's been, like, seamless. Like, everything's seamless. Like, I'm mm-hmm. getting a taxi to going to restaurants, to food, to, I mean, like, everything's just been super easy. Mm. Yeah. And I don't want to tap into the, the politics in, in, in that area, but um, many viewers are usually wondering how much day-to-day life is affected by the politics or the Ukrainian war. Is there anything that you ever noticed walking around in the city? So in June of last year, when I first came here, I was walking by the parliament, and it was a relatively large um, gay, lesbian demonstration. But, I mean, it was more like a festival because, like, they had a rock band and people, you know, just, I mean, it wasn't, like, it wasn't hostile. Mm. Um, and I also really like the way that people actually respect the city, uh, in terms of like cleanliness, um, in terms of the politics, um, I mean, I try not to, you know, ask people, um, but I mean, some people l- like Victor Orban's policies, but they dislike him. Um, but, uh, but, you know, because every time when I am asked, I always say that, well, unless you want to be part of the discussion. Right. Otherwise, I, I, I don't see anything that would affect me. Yeah. Yes. But maybe that we were going to have comments about it, or maybe we are going to have some argument about it. But as far as m- my life and then usually those that I speak to, they are not really affected. No. Um, I mean, I, I yeah, try to talk to as many people as possible, like in restaurants and whatnot. And sure, like the cost of living um, has gone up for them. Um, oh, that, that was my next, qu- yeah. next question. Is actually like what you think? That- so, f- for the local population, um, I have spoken to people that you know get the you know restaurant salaries and whatnot, um, and they're they're not doing great. Um, but those are those are the the hung- Hungarians. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So the Hungarian salary. I mean, the you know they're making anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand euros a month, a month and yes. like they're getting by on that. Um, and you know, I've spoken to people, and I was like, okay, well, if I'm making, I don't know, I think I think I said I asked somebody if I make if I'm making thirty five hundred euros a month, and they're like, you make thirty five hundred euros a month, and you're golden. I don't know that many cities but, uh, that can do that. And and what do you think in terms of uh, variety when you're going into a local supermarket and in terms of the, the prices when you, because I, I do get, I have this um, Facebook group yeah. that I created three years ago for the, specifically for the American expats. And there are questions always from newcomers or, or people who are, um, about to relocate and they ask like, okay, how much money do I need a month? And what the 
grocery prices look like, and restaurant eating out I in mean, the restaurant. Now you do that all the time, right? right? Yeah. So, like for example, today I went and I had, and this is downtown, so it's a touristy area. Right. So prices are going to be generally higher than, I think, for example, some people that will move here, they're not going to want to live downtown, right? They're going to want to. I don't know, live in a different district where the schools are different or whatnot. I don't know. That's your specialty, I guess. Right. But like for me, like, you know, I mean, I'm single and I want to be downtown. I want to go to the bars and, and restaurants and I like walking around everywhere. I don't want to get a car. So downtown makes sense. But like, I think it was, let me just do a quick calculation, but I think it was like less than $7, $6 for spaghetti and a Coke. I mean, I don't know anywhere that's going to be like that right. at all. Um, right. Yeah, I'm trying to do a quick calculation. Okay, maybe it was a bit more. Maybe it was like eight or nine. But, I mean, it was a nice portion of pasta and Coke. and Decent quality. Yeah. Well, the quality of food is really, really impressive. Um, I think it's even more organic than organic food in the U.S. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like that. Um, but that's generally, I mean, European cities are like that. But... Um, cost of living, safety, um, and you know, I'm sure like if, if you're a couple that you know has has a kid, um, I think it's a great environment. It's open, it's clean. Um, I mean, as long as they don't mind to enroll their kids in the Hungarian speaking uh, or public or school. international school. Well, the international school is paid, but the public schools are free. Right. Well. I don't have to worry about that. And the quality is, is very good. So okay. it's not like in the States, the public school. They, here it's still very high very standards. Good. High standards. Yeah. But I mean, I know like I've spoken to a couple of um, a couple of people in Iran and Turkey, um, and they ask about the international schools. Like they're like, well, where are the international schools like? And I'm like, well, I don't know. But international schools generally have the international baccalaureate um, program. Yeah, for so sure. It's I mean, we, yeah, yeah, we have the British, American, French, German, right, and also Arabic speaking. Right, and then the other cool thing is, I mean, Budapest is um, so central to everywhere in Europe. I mean, absolutely love that. Um, yeah, everybody mentions that. Yeah, so you it's want easy, to just escape to... somewhere for three days, like boom, you're right there. Yeah, and it's easy. You mentioned the. Uh, public transportation and you would not buy a car here so it's completely doable right yeah yeah i mean i haven't um really tried the public transportation because i've basically walked everywhere and taken a taxi i think twice mm -hmm. so i mean for the most part you can walk from one part of central to the other in 15 20 minutes like there's nowhere else you're gonna go right but just for those who doesn't know the public Transportation is really on point. Yeah. It's very good. I mean, everyone loves it um, that I've spoken to. I mean, I haven't, but again. Right. Um, but if you do come here, visit, definitely wear some comfortable shoes. <laughs> Personal experience. <laughs> well, I mean, something like New York living would be like. Not as hectic. Not um, at yeah. No, no, of course, but yeah. as far as walking. Yeah. Is, yeah, if you don't like walking, it's not good. Be not going to work out for you. Yeah, well, but you can always drive. The tra public transportation, yeah. Or you can take the public transportation, or you can always drive. Right. We do have traffic, but it's not as LA not, traffic. Not as even. You know, not, not even, even close. close to. I mean, I, I move abroad from Charleston, South Carolina, and people complain about traffic, and it's not even as bad as LA or anywhere mm -hmm. else. And here, yeah, it's just. We have a little bit of traffic. I haven't really. I mean, compared to other major cities or capitals, we don't have traffic at all. <laughs> no. Um, and uh, the weather has been kind of interesting. Because I mean, like two days ago, it was you know shorts and t-shirts, and today I'm wearing my jacket again. Yeah. So that's so spring. Spring, springtime. Yeah. And going, and temperature drops. Yeah. And going up and down. Yeah. Through, a little bit windy, which is unusual. Yeah, and and then my allergies have kicked in today. Sorry about that. So, but I'm just trying to think of some negatives. I mean, or just, any culture shock that you would 
notice right away? No. Like, I mean, not really, no. Like, I haven't noticed it. I mean, if you've traveled, then you're definitely not really going to notice that, mass, that much of a change. I mean, if, you're, if it's your first country that you've left, then, yeah, you're going to experience a culture shock. And, and again, it depends from where you're yeah. relocating from. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, again, like, I mean, um, from restaurants to even taxis, like a lot of taxi drivers and, and other cities can't speak even and two words of English. Do they take cards? Uh, no, you look on an application. Oh, you do the application. Yeah, yeah. So you download an application, uh, Bolt, B-O-L-T, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, you just easily get taxis, and they're all over the place and relatively cheap. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have really anything bad to say. I mean, I wouldn't be moving here if I didn't think it was. Sure, sure, good. sure. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is a very good um, insight for those that who are thinking to relocate or looking into the Hungarian real estate. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah. For chatting today about it, and and you guys, if you have any question. Uh, comment below like we can shoot another video about it like if you know anything that you would be interested um, we can think of yeah. anything else but feel free to comment below and then we can just uh, uh, create another video about uh, those questions in the future so thank you That's again it. yeah no problem. and thank you guys for watching see you next time yeah.